Bootstrap 5 forms are really cool because they've redesigned some of the styling in version 5 and we're going to take a look at them in today's video. If you're looking at building out your own form, we're going to build out this example from Bootstrap. This is a basic checkout with a couple of different things, including inputs and radio buttons and checkouts. And we're going to build this out in HTML and CSS so that you guys get a better idea of how to use Bootstrap 5 to build your next form. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development. So if you haven't already hit like and subscribe and let's just jump straight into it. We'll start at the beginning. So what we'll do is open up a brand new project in VS Code. And I'm going to create a file called index.html. This will be where we begin. And to start off with, we'll just go to the Bootstrap 5 website and we'll copy over their starter template. Now this template has a few things to get us started. It's got our basic HTML in here, but it's also pulling in the CSS and the JS that we need to get Bootstrap up and running. Finally, I'm going to open up a live server and this will allow us to start editing our content in real time so that if we make a change over here, like delete a word from hello world, it'll automatically update in our browser and we can begin building our form here that we've got in Bootstrap 5. The very first thing we're going to do is get rid of this hello world and we're going to collapse up our head here. And what we want to do is we want to start off with our content. So for this example, we've got an image. And in this case, the image is just pulling in that bootstrap logo. So I'm just going to type in bootstrap logo in here. The next thing we want to do is pass in the H2 text. And this is just check out form. And finally, we've got a P tag with some basic text in here. And this says below is an example form built entirely with bootstrap. That should be enough to get us started. Now, if we take a look at this image, it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to put a width of 72 pixels here. And we might also set the height here as well. So let's pass that in as 72 and 72. That should be more or less accurate. The next thing we want to do is give a slight background to the body. And in order to do this, we're going to pass in a class, which will be BG light in our body. And this will make sure that the whole body has a slight gray color. I'm not sure if that's noticeable, but hopefully the inputs will pop a little bit more when we apply them. Next, we want our entire section here to be inside of a container. So I'm going to pass in container here as a div, which is a class. This container class will essentially hold all of our content so that it's responsive with some padding on the left and the right. And that way that fits in a little bit nicely. Now, what we want is for our content not to exist straight from the top. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use one of the new classes here. We're going to use PY-5. Now, what this is going to do is we're going to get five units of padding on the Y axis applied here to our image. So let's apply that and we can see those five units. If we inspect into the content, we can see that we've had the three ERM applied here at the top, which is the essential five units that have been applied. So this is pretty cool. And one of the new things that Bootstrap 5 introduces. The next thing we want to be able to do is make sure that this is centered. So I'm just going to type in text center in here, and this will make sure this icon here is centered. For the checkout form here, what we want is possibly for all of this to be within the one div, which has those five units of padding. So I'm just going to move this inside here. And we're going to hit save to that. So that's looking a little bit better. And finally, for our image, I want to add some more class items. The next thing I want to do is maybe add some margin to the bottom. So this is MB and we're going to do four units of that. So I'm going to hit save on that. And there's our four units of essential margin to our item there. And the next thing I want to do is I also want to make sure that this item, this, this image over here, it is a block. So I'm going to do D dash block here. And I'm also going to pass in MX dash auto. Now what this will do is probably not evident from the get go, but it essentially makes sure that this image here is a display of block. So that way it's not an inline block. It doesn't cause the text to try to overline with it. 
The other thing this does is make sure that the margins on the left and the right are auto. This is the MX auto over here. And this will make sure that it's aligned to the center. So even though we have text aligned center here, this is just another extra that we can do to be able to do that. Finally, we're more or less done. We just want to add one more class here to our P tag. And in this case, I'm going to pass in the tag lead. And what this will do is just some custom CSS here for our font so that it's light in terms of its font weight and a little bit bigger. It's essentially lead text on our P tag. Now we can do our good stuff, which is actually creating the form itself. What we're going to do is create a H4 tag here called billing address. And what I want to do is create a number of inputs. So for these inputs, we're going to pass in a bootstrap class here, essentially called form control. This will apply the styling that we need for the actual input here. We're also going to do another thing, which is pass in an ID. Now, in this case, we'll just pass in first name, and this will be used a little bit later. We need a label for this input. So I'm going to pass in label in here and we'll create this as first name as well. And in here, we'll just pass in some text called first name. This also needs a bootstrap form uh, class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in class here called form dash label. Let's hit save on that to see what we have so far. And that's looking good. We'll paste all of this inside of a container so that we can see it a little bit nicely there. And that's looking good. And the other thing I want to be able to do is possibly add a little bit of margin to it. So in our H4 tag over here, I'm just going to pass in a margin at the bottom of about three units. So let's hit save on that. And that's looking good. We also want some validation. So for our validation, I'm going to pass in invalid feedback. And this is a bootstrap class, which won't be visible unless the form is invalid. We're going to pass in valid first name is required. And you won't be able to see this, but if our form is incorrect, it will appear. Finally, let's put all of this inside of a form. Right now, this entire form section here doesn't have an action. So I'm just going to write in no validation. But later we could create an action depending on what we need. And if we want to finish this up, we can put in a couple of other items in here. So for example, we could put in a placer placeholder here, such as John Smith, and this will make it look a little bit more accurate. But in this case, we'll just have John since it's only the first name. We'll also put in required since this item here is a required field. Now that we have this entire section here done, we can actually copy this out and paste this to create a new item. But before we do that, sometimes our form looks a little bit too long. So what we could do is we could put this inside of a row and this row here could have a column, which is about mm, six units long. And once we do, it'll only use up half the size there. So we can copy this out completely and create a last name now. So let's do last name in here. And let's pass in the ID here as last name. And in this case, we'll pass in Smith and pass in last in here as well and hit save on that. So now we've got our first name and we've got our last name and that part of the form is starting to look good. And here it's all inside of a row. The only other thing I might do is remove the gutters and make them a little bit smaller. And this is one of the new utility classes from Bootstrap 5, which is passing in G dash say three, which will make the gutters essentially a bit smaller. We could pass in G dash zero, for example, to remove them altogether, but we do need them to exist a little bit. So I'm just going to make them a little bit smaller and that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing that we want to do is create the username. And to do that, we're going to create a new column here. And this is just going to span the whole column. So I'm just going to do call dash 12. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy some of this content over here, but we're going to make it slightly different. So in this case, what we want to do is create a user name and we'll save this here for username as the label as well. And for the username, we want an input group and this will allow us to put an icon in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div here called input group. And this will let us put in our icon. So in this case, we're going to do a span and we're going to do an input group text. And in here, we'll put in our icon. Now, in this case, I haven't really used any icons yet. So I'm just going to put in the at sign, but that should be enough to get us started. Then for the input here, we'll do username 
and we'll do a username such as jsmith. And that should be enough to get us up and running. So I'm going to hit save on that. Now, uh, for this input group, we do need to make sure that the entire input is closed inside of this input group, but the input validation can be outside of it. So let's actually save that once more and give that another shot. And we can see here that we've got our input here for the username, and that looks like it's working well. So that's really good. And what I want to be able to do now is move on to the next one. I want to be able to look at drop downs for our inputs here. And for our drop downs, what we're going to do is create another column here. But what I'm thinking is that we'll do a different column sizing this time. This time we'll do MD-5. And for this column here, we'll create a country. So I'm going to copy over these labels that we've created earlier. But in this case, I'm going to pass in country in here. And let's do the label here as country. We want a drop down, and this is going to use a select. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this input group over here. And in here, I'm going to create a select instead of an input. So let's pass in select over here. Now select works a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of most of the content in here, including the type. And since the type is defined by the type of div or well, the type of tag it is already in here. All we need to pass in is the class itself, which has form control in here. We also have to close this off. So here's our closure. We're going to add a couple of options in here. So for the first option, I'm going to do Australia. And for another option, what we could do is we could do something that's empty. So for example, we could just type in here, choose. And this could be where we start our variable off. And this could be empty to start off with as well. So that's enough to get us started with our country one there. And we can see that it's popped up in here. We could create one more option in here, such as USA or China, for example. But uh, at least that gets us started for our drop down over here. Since this is in a column, let's create another one down here. And what I'm thinking for the next one is maybe the state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slightly smaller column, maybe four column width. And in here, we're going to copy over most of the same content. In this case, instead of country, and we did forget to set the ID here as country, what I want to be able to do now is maybe the state. Now, in this case for the state, what I'm going to do is something similar. I'm just going to put in a couple of states here from Australia, such as WA, uh, South Australia, NT, and we'll hit save on that. And we can see that it's appeared here on the right. So that's looking really good. And finally, we need a zip code. And for most zip codes, they're just regular inputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over this quote column design over here. And I'm just going to paste this in, but this will be very small. I'm thinking something like maybe uh, MD dash three columns and we'll hit save on that. Now I'm going to get rid of this input group and that should be about it. The only other thing I'm going to do in here is put in a postcode. So in Australia, we don't have zip codes. We have postcodes, but that should get us started. And a postcode isn't actually text, it's numbers. So I'm going to put in a number in here and hit save. So that's our postcode. I probably do need a placeholder for that. So in this case, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, and that should put the placeholder in there. So let's just do that in the correct area. Here we go. And that's looking good. Let's create a new section. And what I'm thinking to do here is creating a line break. We're going to pass in a class here, and this class will be a margin on the Y axis of four units. And I'm going to hit save on that and we can see that apply. Now, what we want to do is create some checkout inputs. So I'm thinking maybe let's do a div in here with a class of form dash check. And what we're going to do in here is pass in our input for our check. Now for this type, we'll do checkbox and for the class, we're going to pass in something different. We're going to pass in form check input. And this is the new class, but it applies that new sort of form styling to our input there. And that looks pretty cool. 
what I want to be able to do is have some labels in here. And for this specific checkbox, I'm going to do a label in here. And I think I'll have to do an input for this. So in this case, let's do same address. And let's pass in an ID in here. And for this ID, I'm just going to pass in same address as well. Now, what we want to be able to do is for this label, I'm going to do shipping address is the same as billing as our text here. And what I want to be able to do with this label as well is also pass in a class. And for this class, it's going to be a bootstrap class of form check label. So let's hit save on that and we can see it's applied and it seems to be working quite well there. We've got our input there. All of this though does need to be in a column. So I'm just going to put it into a column of 12 and we'll hit save on that. And that's looking pretty good. Now we can add in another one over here. So what I'm thinking is let's just pass one in the same column here. So I'm just going to pass in another one. And in this case, what I'm thinking is maybe something like save this info and let's do save info for the ID. And we'll also pass this into our label as well. So that way we've got our two checkboxes there and they seem to be working quite well. Let's copy over this line break. And the next thing we can do is create our payment section. Right now, there's not that much space on the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to browse up here to our body and I'm just going to give it a little bit more height. I'm going to do min height 8000 pixels. And this is just placed in here for the time being. So we can scroll down because my face is sort of in the way here for all our content. But this lets me scroll down a little bit so that you guys can see this. Now that we can see this content, what I want to be able to do is add this payment section. So I'm thinking that uh, we'll just add a H4 tag here. And for this H4 tag, we'll just label it as payments. Now for this H4 tag, we want to give it a bit of margin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some margin, but only at the bottom of maybe three units. The next thing I want to do is create our inputs here for a credit card section. And this will be a little bit complicated because we'll need to be able to choose whether we want a credit card or PayPal or direct debit. So what I will do to start off with is maybe create a checkbox or a radio box to accomplish this. Normally we do radio boxes. So what I'm thinking is let's do a uh, let's see, let's do an input here. And for this input, I'm going to do the type here as radio. And we'll add a class here of form check input. And let's take a look at how this is visible. So here it is. And it's looking okay, we need to give it a label. So I'm going to put the label after it. And I'm going to give it a name as well. So in this case, maybe credit card. We'll copy this same ID into our input over here. So we know this label is referencing it and we'll just place credit card in here for the label. Now we probably want this all wrapped. So I'm going to wrap this in a uh, form dash check. This is a bootstrap class that'll just make it work a little bit better. And we'll hit save on that. And we can see that's popped up nicely there. This is also a required field. So I'm going to do required on this. And it's also our default value. So I'm going to set this as checked and this should come up automatically as checked, which looks good. Now that we have this one set, we can copy it over and create another one. Now, in this case, what I'm thinking is that maybe in this case, this one can be direct debit. So let's copy that across in here. And let's update the label as well. Now, since both of these inputs are the same type, the radio, we need to give them a name. In this case, I'm going to give them the name of payment method. And this makes a lot of sense, but we're going to have the same name for all of them. And this way, when we're selecting between them, it'll automatically update. It's not going to have an individual radio for each individual one. Let's copy one last one. And what I'm thinking for this last one is maybe something like PayPal. So let's update this text in here to say PayPal.
Let's capitalize the P over there. And we'll do the same here for the label. Let's pass in PayPal for the ID and everything else we can leave the same. So now we've got our three payment methods and they're looking pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the actual section where we place the credit card in. So let's collapse this area over here because we're no longer using most of this. And in here, what I'm thinking is we'll start off with a row. We're gonna have two columns in here. So let's do call MD6 for the very first one. And let's copy that across one more time for the second one. And what I wanna be able to put in here is the name on card and maybe on the right side, the actual credit card number. Now we have these two items, we're gonna need inputs for both of them. So let's create an input over here. And for this input, I'm gonna do this as the text of type with a class here of uh, form control. And this should be the one that essentially makes it look good. And we're going to probably copy that across here for the credit card as well. So we can see the two columns over here. Now, this row doesn't have much spacing from above. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it, uh, let's see, maybe a margin on the y-axis of about three units. So it, got, it has some spacing there from the top. And I'm also going to reduce the gutters on it. So I'm gonna do GY, which is gutters on the y-axis of maybe three units as well. And that should be good now. So. Now that we have this, what we can do now is we can finalize these two inputs here. And what I'm thinking is maybe to give them an invalid feedback option. So let's do invalid dash feedback in here. And again, this won't be visible unless we have an error, but uh, let's type in is uh, the name on the card is required and we'll hit save on that. And we'll copy this across below as well. And what we'll do is credit card number is required here for the second one. So that's good. And finally, what we might wanna do is maybe add like a little bit of a hint or a note on the section. So we can do this by perhaps adding in, uh, let's see, let's jump here on the name section, right? And we'll create a small tag, which has text muted as a class. And in here, we'll have something like full name as displayed on card. Now I'm gonna hit save on that and we can see that it's popped up here below, which is really cool. And it's a slightly gray color, but it's an example of how we can get this to work. Now, the other thing I wanna do is maybe add a label for this rather than just simple text. So up here, I'm gonna do a label. And for this, I'm gonna do full name. And this full name can be for our input over here. So let's just pass this in. And what I wanna be able to do for this one is maybe add a class in here as well. Let's add a class of maybe form label. And let's hit save on that. And that just adds a little bit of spacing on there. And ideally we should be doing that on the other one as well for the credit card number. So what I might do in here is pass in CC dash number. And let's pass this in as an ID here for our credit card number. So I'm gonna hit save on that and we can see that two of them have appeared there and that's looking really good. Now we also need a couple of other columns here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a column MD of three, which is much smaller. And this will be where we set our expiration. So I'm gonna do expiration here. And the expiration is the expiration date for the credit card. So we'll need to do another input in here. So let's do input here. And what I'm thinking is, it might actually be easier just to copy this entire column here and just use that instead. So let's try that again, expiration. And in here we'll do CC expire. And let's copy over this for the label as well. And for the error here, maybe expiration is required. So let's hit save on that. We've got our expiration in here. We only want it to be three columns in width. So that's looking better. And we can copy this out once more 
And we could do CVV, I think it is. Let's pass that in CVV. And in here, this can be the CVV for the actual card as well. Um, I think we'll just pass in CVV is required. And there we go. So that's mostly it. We can finalize this now because we're almost done. And to do that, I think we'll simply close out this row with a HR. And for this HR, I might just give it a quick class of four margin units on the Y axis. And finally, we can add a button here to submit the form. So let's do something like continue to check out. Now for this button, in order for it to be styled correctly, let's add some classes to it. So maybe button and button primary. And we also want this to be a large button. So we'll pass in button dash LG. And we want this to utilize the full width. So I'm going to turn this button into a block for the display. And let's hit save on that. And there we go. We can see our continue to checkout button. And that's more or less our entire form done. And it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that one. And this gives you an example of how to do a checkout form in Bootstrap with all the new styling and more or less some of these cool new classes, which are utility classes that allow us to style a little bit faster and a little bit nicer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.